Hello, this is Jeff Tiedemann, Jet Fan Man. This is an installation I had the opportunity to do during the year 2013, during the summer. And uh, I was able to do this installation here, just the rooftop part of it, in under six minutes. So I just wanted you to have a little confidence about how long this takes, and, and that it's really not a big deal to do this installation up on the roof. So I've already found the center. There's a nail there in the middle, and I held my tape at eight inches, described a eight inch circle around that nail in the center between the two rafters. Now these rafters are 14 and a half inches apart between the rafters, so it's 16 inches on center, leaves 14 and a half between them. And as I come by the rafter there on the side, right about there, I'll hold the saw at a 45 degree angle so I don't cut deeply into the rafter, maybe just nick the corner off the rafter. And uh, so the opening is 16 inches in diameter total, and then I just narrow it on the sides. So now I'll start uh, clearing the nails out from underneath the shingles. Flashing on the jet fan 727 is 24 inches by 24 inches. So I just need to make sure there's about six inches clear to the side and above that, uh, that opening. Now below it, I don't do anything because the flashing is gonna lay over the shingles at the bottom. That way the water just runs right off. The jet fan has 40 thousandths thick aluminum, so it'll never rust, it'll never blow off, or Road. There's a heavy screen to stop birds and squirrels. There's stainless steel bolts so you don't get any rust streaking down your roof. And what, what, what people really like about the jet fan is it's quieter. So you don't have to listen to the awful grinding, humming noise that comes from foreign motors. They're just uh, cheap and expensive to run. This jet fan only takes about tw uh, 25 cents for it to run 12 hours. Whereas the cheap motors, they'll take about 50 cents. So Although the jet fan costs more over time, it pays you back just on what it saves on the electric bill and, of course, you know, what's it worth to be able to sleep at night. So. The world's best static fan, wider flashing, so it won't leak. Not like these cheap, narrow flashings here. We only have three inches of coverage here. The sticks and leaves get in here. They get dammed up right here because the shingles were too tight. So the water ran horizontally. Not so much there, but over here you can see it left the stain over here. The water kind of went horizontally. So it's important to leave a space here along the side, especially if you get one of these cheap attic fans that's got a real narrow flashing on it. Sometimes these fans will run as late as 10 or 11 at night, and uh, you don't want to hear that awful sound. Now, I'm trimming the sides here a little bit beyond the 16-inch circle. And the reason I'll do that is because I need, I need to leave a little bit of a channel for water to get out. I don't do it around the top, I just do it around the sides. So I'm finishing that trim so that so the shingles will touch the stack of the fan at the top, but there'll be a little bit of space between the shingles at the sides. It's very important to do that to make sure that if there's any sticks or leaves or just, I don't know, you know, stuff that blows around in the air, um, we're, we're to get in into that groove between the shingles and the stack, you know, the vertical stack that comes up off the flashing. Sometimes it can dam up and cause water to flow sideways, which is why it's important to have a wider flashing. And the jet fan does. It's full 24 inches. It's not the 22 inches like the cheaper fans. Okay, so I'm fitting the fan up underneath the shingles at the top. And um, I want the shingles to touch at the top of the stack so that it'll minimize any sticks or leaves or junk getting in there. And then, if anything does get in there, the wider channels on the side will let it flow out. So I'm putting a nail in at the bottom, kind of inside from the uh, vertical position of the edges of the stack, so it doesn't get a lot of water flow there right by the nails. I will caught those nails' heads shortly. But right now I'm just nailing up underneath the shingles so the nail Try to uh, cover as many nail uh, heads as possible, and um, I'll be put, putting some silicone caulk on the nail heads and underneath the shingles that I've separated because, um, especially on older roofs, that that tar uh, adhesive that they use to for the on the shingles to hold them down in the wind. Once it's separated, it may not uh, seal again. May not seal down. So. I'll use a little bit of silicone under the shingles, not so much for sealing, because it doesn't really need to be sealed, but what it does need to do is not blow off. 
So I'll use some shingles underneath, um, well, just on those nail heads because they are exposed to the weather. And the great thing about silicone, it just stays soft. It sticks really well to those, uh, that aluminum and those nail heads. Okay, so here I'm just caulking the side a little bit just in case there's a real strong wind uh, from the southwest there. We don't want any wind to blow up underneath that uh, uh, flashing there. Uh, that'd have to be a really strong wind, but you know, it could happen. So let's caulk that. And basically what I'm doing here is just making sure that these shingles don't get blown off. Just make sure they're stuck down good. As far as leaking, that's not really the point. We're not trying to make it airtight. We're just because we've already established that, you know, water flows downhill, right? So if the top of the flashing is underneath the shingles and the bottom of the flashing is over the shingles, the whole fan is like one big shingle. The water runs right off. So I'm just making sure that the shingles won't blow off. I like using silicone because if I ever did need to remove this fan, I actually could. The silicone will separate, and I'll, I could get that fan back out of there, and uh, you know, if I had to. So I, I kind of like it because it's not real gooey and sticky, and you know, impossible to deal with, like uh, like ice and water shield, or like um, you know, ro plastic roofing cement. Just showing here how the shingles are cut back shorter on the sides while water get through. And up there at the top, you leave it tight so stuff doesn't get in. And then as you go down the sides, let, let the gap between the shingles and the stack get wider and wider. Coming up from the bottom here, you see the, that wide gap on the side, kind of a tight gap on the top so nothing gets in. As far as sticks and leaves, that would impede water from getting out. Coming down the other side, starts with a narrow gap and it opens wider and wider, let leaves and sticks flow out bottom. And I'm just showing my work here how I made the bottom of the shingle. Shingles parallel with the bottom of the fan. I should have left a little more metal exposed to the weather there. That's kind of the minimum. About five inches is perfect here. So you have one full course of uh, metal exposed to the weather at the bottom here. So I'm just caulking the nail heads here. One thing to keep in mind, of course, never caulk the bottom of the flashing underneath to let water get out. So I'm just caulking the sides here just to stop wind from blowing, you know, rain. If there's a real strong wind, it might blow rain up sideways under there. So I'm caulking the shingles to make sure the wind does not blow them up or off. Um, one thing about the silicone, you have to really press it down while it's still soft before it starts to harden. Looks like there was a delay on the job. And some of this caulk here is already starting to set up a little bit. And uh, so you got to press it down, make sure it stays stuck down tight. Uh, yeah, there you go.